Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Everton show. We're off to the south coast on Sunday. It's a first competitive visit to Brighton & Hove Albion for Everton since April 1983. To look ahead to this weekend's game, I'm joined by Ian Snowden and by this fella. Neville, lovely little comeback there! What a finish that was from Osman! It's Osman, it's 2-1! This is Heitinger, gets the return ball. Now it's Leon Osman to Ben Warren! Oh, what a goal! Johnson wants it played down the inside right channel. They're standing up at the moment. It's Leon Osman! Oh, fabulous! Osman. Lovely shot, lovely goal. Leon Osman wraps it up for Everton in stoppage time. 3 0. Ozzy, welcome to the Everton show. You're back on the telly again. I am, yeah. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here, Darren. Thanks very much. Uh, you seem to be enjoying it and it's going very well. Yeah, I am. You know, to, to be asked to, to come back and, and give opinions and, you know, voice my concerns or ad admiration of, uh, of things on the TV is great and I'm, I'm happy to do it. Taylor made for it, wasn't he, surely? Well, he was, but I had my reservations. <laughs> when, I, when I used to see him at Finch Farm messing about with people's phones and messing about with the clothes, I thought I'd never see Ozzy on TV <laughs> being serious. But he's good at it. He was a guy I looked up to. I thought if he can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> he's good at it. He's, do, he's doing okay, isn't he? Let's see how he does on the Everton show. <laughs> Well, earlier this week, we celebrated 10 years of Finch Farm. Yes, unbelievably, it's 10 years since we relocated from Belfield to Finch Farm. Ozzy Finch Farm, 10 years of age this week, you were here on day one, did it take some adjusting for the players or as professionals was it just a case of Belfield one day, Finch Farm the next, we've got to get on with it? No, it definitely took some adjusting, really? you know, the, the, the training ground at Belfield was, was so compact and tight and everyone was on top of each other and you know you could stand in the, in the reception and shout someone's name and, and hear them no matter where you were in the, in the complex. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm sure Snods did that a few times, <laughs> uh, but to come here and have it being so open and, and vast and you know the the things were so spread out, mm. it did take a bit of getting used to, but the facilities here are, are, are second to none, and you know, once we've been here a while, it, it became home. It's a fabulous place. You loved Belfield Snods, mm. and we'll speak a little bit more about Belfield as we go on, but even 10 years down the line, Finch Farm is still developing, there's still new structures being added, the first team block, for example. It's incredible, Daz, to what I'd been used to at Belfield, which was unbelievable. It was a great setup down there, but uh, the players here want for nothing. Uh, Got a swimming pool, which is hard work when you're in the swimming pool. It's not there just for relaxation, uh, but all the other facilities and now a new first team block, which is absolutely fantastic. I did see a couple of people in there with their kids. Did the you? Yeah, there was a bit of enjoyment goes on in that pool as well. <laughs> Does it make a difference having the 18s, the under 23s, and the first team all in the same complex? Because obviously, in your days, it, it wasn't the case. Yeah, I mean, for the first team, I don't think it really, really matters that that, that that happening. But for the young lads, you know, having seen that in the other side of the training pitch, having that to aspire to, that the, the journey you need to go on making your way down the building from where you, you arrive in the, the academy bit to all the way to the first team part is it, it, fantastic. And, you know, I was unfortunate that we've got moved around training grounds in, in years gone by. So to, to have it all under one roof is it makes it special. I, I know what he's talking about there, Daz, because even when I was at Doncaster, you aspire to them professionals at Donny mm. and as a 16 year old kid like to see the players walk past or you had to go into the dressing room to clean the kit and stuff like that you used to think one day I want to be one of them mm. pros kind of thing so I know where it's coming from. They want for nothing now do they? Oh n absolutely nothing uh, I wouldn't want to leave me I'd come in at nine <laughs> o'clock I won't go home till nine o'clock as well. Yeah I nearly got a divorce <laughs> towards the end of the career I've got to be honest. <laughs> but no it is it's, it's great and uh, 
as you said, the players just want for nothing. Everything's laid on for them. Must make you feel better as a professional footballer knowing that you, that you, you do want for nothing. You are training at the best possible facility. Yeah, you know, you you want to to better your game. You want to be the best, and and you know to do that. To, you know, there's no excuses with you having the, the best facilities and, you know, if you want to stay out and train, that there's all sorts of goals and, uh, and balls and cones, whatever you may need, whatever you can think mm. of, they've got and they will provide for you to try and help you be better. Just quickly, how important was it to bring the Belfield atmosphere as much as possible to finish farm? Yeah, it was very important and, and that was what probably took us a little bit longer than, than normal, you know, the, the changeover period was, was a little bit difficult but, you know, I think it took six months, a year, maybe two. But then, you know, once, once, you, once we got it, it, it just feels like home again. Well, Ozzy was here on day one, so was I, as a matter of fact. Let's hear now from somebody else who's been at Finch Farm for the whole ten years. The irrepressible, the rascal, that is Jimmy Martin. Jimmy Martin, you've been here virtually every day for the ten years we've been at Finch Farm. It doesn't seem like ten years, does it? No, it doesn't, Darren. Uh, it's flown over. Uh, but it's, uh, I've enjoyed it here while I've been here. But I still miss uh, Belfield, the old Belfield. It's like uh, home from home, really, wasn't it? Everybody misses Belfield, don't they? I enjoy it when the lads start talking about the, the Belfield days. Well, what I miss at Belfield is uh, be sandwiched every day when Mary Ellis used to make it. <laughs> it had a big hand mark on it, and you don't get that here, you know what I mean? So, no, I miss, I miss Mary because uh, she used to make the best dinners. It was either uh, egg and beans or sausage and beans or a jam butty, or that was it. <laughs> Even that's changed, Jimmy, hasn't it? You go to the canteen now and sometimes there's 30 or 40 people in the queue. Not in my queue, no, I just walked <laughs> in the front. Uh, no, it's uh, it's a different menu altogether, and it's like it's like being in a restaurant every day. You know, it's, it's what the players want, it's what the food they have, and it's a, just a different world completely. Is it still changing all the time for you? Every day is different. Every day changes. That's what the good thing about the job is. Every day just changes every day, and uh, the staff have got Tony and Sean and Ben. It's four of us now. Where I used to do it all on my own. You know what I mean? It's uh, just a different place to work. Lovely place to come into, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, I wouldn't give it up for the world. I'm uh, nearly 102, as you say, and I'm still going. So, no, nah, it's just good to come to work every day. <laughs> Jimmy Martin's obviously one of the enduring characters of Finch Farm, and just following up from what Ozzy said there, Snods, it's so important to bring these type of people from Belfield to Finch Farm to create a similar atmosphere as you can. Daz, I think it's characters in training. Uh, the Players I played with, Adrian Heath, what a funny lad, Reedy, uh, Dave Watson, Kev Ratcliffe, Kev Sheedy. See if they came to that complex, to this complex at Finch Farm, it'd be exactly the same. They'd still be wanting to take the, the mickey out of each other, still cutting people's clothes up and stuff <laughs> like that. It's what you make of that dressing room and that's what I really miss in, in football it is. I'm enjoying it, I love what I do, but see that dressing room from when you get in there to when you leave. There's no yeah. other place like it, is the Aussie? No, none at all. But again, you know, we're talking about incredible players and incredible characters there but I personally feel it's it's the staff that make the place because yeah. the players the turnover yeah. of players is you know is come and go it happens all the time but the staff tend to stay here for years and if you have a good base of staff then mm. they keep the place alive keep the traditions going that's what makes it but place. I think you've got to treat them staff exactly like you treat your, your mates your, your colleagues if there's oh a I did <laughs> <laughs> but Jimmy Martin I can vouch really, for that. <laughs> Jimmy Martin but the girls behind the canteen as well have a laugh with them. Why mm. not? They're in the same building. They're in the same facilities. Bring it along with them as well. Yeah, and the more you do that, the more it becomes a place that everybody wants to come mm. and work and you enjoy it. And if you do that, you work better. Correct. And he used to cut people's clothes up, no, hide no. the phones, take the SIM cards out. I don't think I ever cut people's clothes Did up. But I, can't, I can't argue with the rest of them. <laughs> what? Not even Ibos? <laughs> no, I would like to have <laughs> cut people's clothes up. That's what I mean. <laughs> characters are plenty at both Belfield and Finch Farm. One of my favourite characters here at Finch Farm was big Dennis Strachwellers. You remember him, the big Argentinian centre forward that David Moyes brought over. Well, earlier this week at Goodison Park, I caught up with Phil Neville and he too loved the bones of Big Dennis. He wasn't the greatest player I've ever played with, but I tell you what, he was a brilliant lad around the place. Mm. And no, no one will forget, ever forget his goal against Chelsea here. You know, when he goes past John Terry, has the goal and sticks it past Peter Chet, who's coming out. We won that game. It was a brilliant game. And, it, and you know, I think down the year, you think of Amakachi, you think of Strakulersi. This club loves a centre forward with a bit of character, and Dennis had had that in abundance. His mates had a bit of character, didn't he? Royston Drenthe as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he? Was he now? He's a film star or something now? No, he was a. 
he was, he was certainly someone that had unbelievable talent. He'd just come from Real Madrid. Yeah, I think at times he still thought he was playing with Ronaldo, Zidane and Figo. And, uh, but he was actually a character around the place and someone that... He used to call me grandpa every single day <laughs> because I was obviously coming to the end of my career. And we had a laugh with, but a, a wasted talent. You love coming back here, don't you? Oh, it's, it's brilliant. I, I, was, the, the, I was driving down the, uh, the M62 today and and uh, the taxi driver was taking me to the end of the M62. I said, no, go on the M52. So this is the route I used to always take every every day for eight years. It was my lucky route. Turn left onto the East Lanks and come past the, the cinema on the left-hand side. They now put a, sh a Starbucks on the right-hand side <laughs> on that. So it, it, things are getting better now. It's a brilliant place. And uh, I think my dream one day is to actually come back here and actually work here one day. That's, that's my dream, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Leave that with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't, don't wait by the phone. <laughs> Phil Neville breathing down your next nuts. Yeah, is he after an ambassador job? I'll have to warn Diamond, warn Sharpie. I know he's been after it as well, but he's doing too well on their TV. Surely not. Day. But uh, no, great lad. Um, took a lot of our fans to get used to him in an Everton shirt because they'd seen him in a Man United shirt. But one thing Phil Neville will give you as a captain and as a leader is 100% every week, week in and week out. Yeah, he was a great character to have around the place. He, he led by example. He got Everton, didn't he? He did. I mean, and you know, he, he was. He came from Man United, who was his first love, mm. and he came to Everton, but quickly got us mm. uh, and joined in and everything. Led by example, the fans took to him. He made tackles that the fans wanted to, and he was he was a great person, a great character to have around the dressing room. We just finished fourth at the time when Phil Neville joined us, and we didn't get off to the best of starts, did we, the following <laughs> season? <laughs> no, we didn't. Uh, we got knocked out of Europe. Um, twice. <laughs> twice. We were struggling in the league and it got to about November, December time and we were still in the bottom three and he came up to us saying, we're going to get relegated. Are we going to get relegated? I'm going to take the club down. It's going to be my fault. I'm going to get relegated. I was like, Phil, we've got far too much to get relegated. We just need to get the ball rolling. We need a little bit of luck and we'll be fine. He was like, it's going to be my fault. We're gonna take, I'm going to take the club down. Like, fine, Phil, don't worry. And obviously we, we quickly got on a run. I think we ended up finishing mid-table. Mm. Did, did Phil have to come in and prove himself all over again? As a footballer, I think I think I don't think he did. But any good footballer with you know with his attitude does that everywhere he goes. And he came in wanting to improve himself, wanting to show what he's capable of. And I think he did that quite quickly. He must have had that respect off you lot in the dressing room when he first arrived, Ozzy, for what he'd won and England international. So he must have had the respect. Well, of that's the it. He came away. from he came from Man United. He'd, mm. he'd won pretty much everything you mm. can as as a club player. Um, and, he, and he'd come to join, you know, our our progress, our progression that we were making forward. And you know, as I said, we, we looked up to him mm. as young lads, and uh, and he proved how, how good he was on the field. He was a great lad around the place. And that's just about it for part one of this week's Everton show. Coming up after the break, we'll hear from Morgan Schneiderlin, Gilfie Sigurdsson, and we look ahead to our weekend trip to Brighton. Welcome back to part two of this week's Everton show. We're also celebrating a 10th anniversary are Leighton Baines and Phil Jagielka. Ten years as Everton footballers and snods. You hosted a celebratory event at Goodison recently. I did, in the Alex Young suite, and I was quite nervous. First one I'd done, I stood in for you, I think, Daz. Uh, you had every right to be nervous. Yeah, Nance. I was very nervous. And <laughs> of two people you didn't want to interview <laughs> is Jags and Bainesy, because they made it difficult as well for me. But got a bit I, of stick? I got a lot of stick, to be honest. But now, the great lads... Um, they did make it easy for me because they talk, they speak. They're not like, don't give you one word answers, which could be uncomfortable. So now they're great lads, great professionals, and uh, I'm glad I, I know them. And they are top, top lads. Oh, I can't speak highly yeah. enough about the pair of them to, you know, to be such good lads off the field, to be in such good players on the field. And, and they're the type of the players that give you eight out of 10 minimum every week. They give you their attitude, the, the, the players that, if you're up against it, you know they're in for the fight as mm. well, and you know it does not surprise me at all the length of their Everton careers. We were talking there before about characteristics that we wanted to bring from Belfield to Finch Farm, and them too, as well as yourself, just to epitomise that. Yeah, definitely. You know, you need to have strong characters in the dressing room to make it work, and you know, you, you need your different types of characters: your laughers, your jokers, your, your people that you can go and talk to at time of need, your leaders. And, and in, in them, they encompass pretty much every one of them aspects. So, I um, mean, not only do they do that and they're so important off the field, but, you know, they're incredible players as well. It's like when me, Diamond and Sharpie come to Finch Farm. We're talking about the same thing, yeah. here, trying to compare no, ourselves. No, we, we, we go down and see Jimmy Martin. We, we always go down and see Jimmy. And it's great because 
the likes of Ozzy when he was here, Ibo, uh, Bainesy, Jags, you can have a laugh with them. They come straight into Jimmy's office, give us a bit of steak and all that. But they respect us as well. So the respect is mutual uh, from us to them. And uh, yeah, we just get along great. Still playing well. It's not as well, aren't they? Oh, without a doubt they are. Playing very well. Deserve to be yeah. uh, still looking stronger their Everton careers, and you know I'm, I'm hoping that they've got a few years left because they're, they're, for me they, we look better when they're in the team. Mm. Two great lads, that's for sure. Well, it's time now for this week's my first. And sitting in the chair is Morgan Schneiderlin. <laughs> When I was 22, I just uh, took another DA3, but the DA3 now I give them to my sister, so it's still in the family, so it's good. Fun, maybe the World Cup 98, maybe. You know, when France won, I was I was uh, nine eight years old, and that was uh, that was really when uh, I started to watch very much the games, you know, and everything. And uh, I always remember the um, the times when. Uh, we went out in the street and party after the, the win in the World Cup. Uh, it's probably when I kick the ball with my uh, with my grandmother, my mom in the in the garden of my grandmother. You know, the, I always wanted to kick the ball and I kick the ball against the flower and everything. And I always say that uh, to my grandmother that uh, when I'm gonna be a uh, a professional footballer, I will buy uh, a lot of flowers because uh, she was upset with me <laughs> because I killed her all of us. I had a dog called uh, Milu <laughs> because he was, uh, I don't know if you know the, the cartoon um, Tintin, you know, and uh, the dog called Milu, and then uh, I had this dog but he was, he was not educated, you know, so he killed uh, okay, uh, the, the sofa, the carpet. I swapped shots with Bab. Well, I took it. I don't know if he took my shot, but I took the shot of Berbatov. Okay. When we played Man United in, uh, I think, FA Cup or something. When I was uh, in academy in Strasbourg, we had, I had, a, uh, I was doing, a, they say, um, it was a, a diploma called marketing, and then on for you the year you have to spend three months in the afternoon where you have to walk in a shop, so I was uh, walking in a shop called a shop center. I think so, it was not a good experience, but uh, it's part of life. It makes you, it makes you uh, know that there's not just football and that there's, uh, there's something else in life. So now let's look ahead to the weekend visit to Brighton and the Hove Albion. It's a game so many levels that we really could do with winning it's a tough game that's there's no question about it um, we're in a position where we need wins uh, it's going to be a difficult game I've got plenty of respect for Chris Hewton as a coach as well I think he's done ever so well in his career done great with Brighton and it's going to be a difficult game their fans are going to be up for it uh, it's exciting times for their fans as well being in the Premier League and uh, yeah, we, we just need to go down there, hopefully get the first goal and then consolidate from there. But it'll not be easy. Uh, they've got one or two good players and they've got a, a player, Ozzy, that uh, I'm sure you've seen training, you've played with him, Shane Duffy, who I thought uh, is an excellent buy for them. He is. You know, he was he made his debut with us in, in the first team and uh, and did great. Mm. Um, he's, a, he's a proper defender. He's an old-fashioned defender that mm. wants to head it and wants to kick it and stick his leg in and stop a, a goal happening. Um, you know he's improved his football as well over the years, but you know you saw him playing for Ireland in, in midweek um, against Wales, and he was absolutely outstanding. I know. thought he was best player, best player on the really pitch. He defended mm. everything. Every time the ball came in the box, he won it, and mm. you know he, he'll go into this game with a lot of confidence in front at the weekend. And you know he's, he's someone we'll have to get past. It, what, will, what will sorry, Snodge, What will Brighton's remit be this season, Ozzy? Will it simply be let's finish above the bottom three, so we're in the Premier League next season, and see if we can then push on? Yeah, absolutely. Survival, um, you know, and, and, and what they've got on their side is, you know, they know they're going to suffer defeats during the season and they'll put them behind them quickly and move on. And every game is, is, is the next thing coming up. And, you know, when you do that, confidence levels can stay quite high and they'll see this the way our form's been lately. They'll see this as an opportunity the weekend and, and that makes it extra tough for us. Does it weren't that long ago that they might have gone out of the Football League? Mm. 
uh, when you think, and now they're playing games against Man City, Man United, Chelsea, Everton's, Arsenal's. Must be great for their fans from a few years ago thinking they're not even going to exist to now being in the Premier League. Brighton against Everton on Sunday. Well, we mentioned Shane Duffy then. Another player who was celebrating during the week was Gilfie Sigurdsson. He helped Iceland to qualify for the World Cup in Russia next summer. We caught up with Gilfie when he got back to USM Finch Farm. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, it was nice to score in such an important game. Um, and leading up to the game, you were you were hoping and, and you were kind of wishing that you could help the team with a goal. Um, so it was, it was a nice feeling to score in such an important game. Of course, we've all been waiting for for what happened to, to Icelandic football to actually go to the World Cup. Um, it's happening now, so that's... That's, uh, I mean, this is just an outstanding feeling, and, and um, I think all of the players and, and the people in Iceland as well are really proud of. So I will be looking forward to going to Russia now. Smallest nation ever to qualify for a World Cup. It's fantastic what Iceland have been doing for the past couple of seasons. But how do you think you can fare next summer? Um, hopefully, well. Uh, we'll have to see, of course, with the playoffs uh, being next month, but then the draw in, in December. So we'll have to see what group we'll be in. But um, I think we. We'll have a good chance of making it through the group, but we know it's going to be difficult. But um, as I said, we we haven't got anything to lose, and I think we'll go into the World Cup with the same mentality um, we had going into the Euros. You return to Premier League action now. How important is it to put in a performance this weekend? Uh, very, very important for us. Um, we need to get better winning ways. Um, disappointing result against um, Burnley, so it's very important for us to start picking up points and. It would be nice to do that on, on Sunday. Snod's ahead of the weekend, Gilfie Sigurdsson and the boys who did well in the World Cup must be full of confidence. It must be great to come back to the training ground knowing that you've secured your place at the World Cup next summer. More importantly, does they came back injury free. <laughs> That's all course, I'm bothered yeah. about for, uh, for Evans' point of view. But no, for, the, for themselves, uh, it's great for them to qualify. Uh, the lads, great for Seamus as well, that Ireland have took it to a, to a game as well. So, uh, no, every Everton player that's involved I, I've not took much notice of the World Cup qualifiers. I really haven't, even England as well. I want us to get there. We are there. But I just I just watch it for the Everton lads that are playing mm. in certain games and I just want them to do well. Nice to see Michael Keane getting a start for England. And England have strolled the group. But there's still something missing, isn't there? Yeah, well, first of all, you're right. It's, it's great to see Michael Keane. And I think he's earned his, his chance through his performances. He's, he's done really well, got the move here and, and continued to shine. And... Yeah, it's there is something lacking with England. There's there's just that spark in the middle of the park, that that creative mm. pass or that that little spark of run or, or energy, a bit of magic that's that's just missing at the moment. And you know, it, it gets found out more against the teams that are prepared to defend, and, and that's when you need these players to come alive. And at the moment, I think we're better suited for counter attack. Those England caps that you won are they right up there, highlights of your career? Um, well, there's certainly proud moments. You know, I've thoroughly enjoyed both both occasions I, I played for my country. Very proud to have done it. Uh, but I've had just as many proud moments playing for Everton. There was much rejoicing of Finch Farm amongst ourselves when <laughs> Ozzy got the call. Yeah, and he finally deserved, got the call. He up. deserved <laughs> it as well. He really did. He was playing never so well for uh, for Everton, scoring goals, playing with confidence. And everybody was saying, "When's Ozzy going to get his chance?" And when he did, there were everybody, and I mean everybody, Ozzy <laughs> were delighted. Yeah, it was it was mad just walking around the the complex. Everyone was patting me on the back, and the dinner ladies were going, "Great, there's some extra eggs and stuff." <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Do, do you know what I felt proudest for his mum and dad because I know him personally. They're great people, and I, they must have been so proud of Ozzy uh, getting his cap. It was just a shame you had that moustache for charity, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a real shame. Yeah, timing wasn't great, but you know, if you, if you commit to doing something for charity, I couldn't shave it off just for my England cap. But uh, you know, I look back and I see the moustache now on the pictures. <laughs> my kids ask, "Is that that was that the style back then?" And I'm like, "No, it wasn't." Uh, but you know, I'm I'm proud that, that I managed to that I did it, but and can stayed committed to the moustache. I remember when moustache old footballers were the norm snods. I do in '87 when <laughs> I came down, and I look back at my pictures yeah, and I think, "Wow!" I don't think mine could be considered a moustache. I think that was the problem. It I was, never, uh, Aussie, I never was a bad shaved attempt. from being 15 year old. And when I came to Everton, I was 23 and it was still just <laughs> light. It, honestly. But, uh, oh, I got loads of stick from the scouts. I thought I've got to get rid of More this. More stick quickly. for the tash than the mullet. Both, really. <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> right, from the recent past to, uh, to the future. 
Another good win for the under 23s, they beat Portsmouth in the Premier League Cup. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, Unzi's got them playing with confidence. Whatever team he puts out there seem to uh, want to do the business for him, want to go and entertain, want to go and win. And uh, yeah, he's got a great spirit amongst them 23s. Doing well, aren't they? Yeah, they're doing great. And you know, as he's not just said, Unzi's really got them playing well. He's got a, a different brood coming through now. You know, the ones he had last season out on loan or in and around first teams. And he's he started all over again, and you know it's it's good to see players like Lavery coming and scoring mm. goals. Benny's doing doing great in, in in the middle of the park, and you know I, I would expect Dunsey will probably have another couple just on the edge of the first team coming the end of the season. Benny Beningham, he signed a new contract, which is great. Yeah, I like him. I really do. I think he breaks up play. He's comfortable on the ball, passes it intelligently as well, and he's a nice kid as well. I like good kids. Yeah, too. he's a footballer. Yeah. He's, he's, it's great when you see the footballers coming through, but you know he's, he's not the tallest, but he's learned how to mix it as well, mm. and you need all of that to play in the Premier League these days. He's going to be a character as well, isn't he, I think? Certainly, yes. He's going to be great at Finch Farm for the next <laughs> 10 years, we hope. And that's just about it. For this week's Everton Show, my thanks to Snods and Aussie. We got there in the end. Do join us again next week for another Everton Show. You've been watching the Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe, and that way you can catch every single future episode. <laughs>